are beginning a series on the book of Luke. And so the title is The Gospel According to Luke. We're going to look at the first four verses in the book of Luke today. This is much more of an introductory uh, 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 speech than a sermon, I would say, in many ways. It's talking about the book of Luke and how it is similar and different from the other gospels. And what I would like for you to do as we go through these things and think about these things is I want you to set a personal goal for what you would like to gain from our series in the book of Luke. What, what you would like it to mean for you, um, maybe learn something new, maybe to, to strengthen. I mean, we should always set the goal to strengthen our faith. But especially as we go through the kind of the uniqueness of the book of Luke, set a goal for what you would like to get out of it spiritually overall as we do that. Looking at an introduction, uh, there are two books that are attributed to the author Luke in the Bible, and that would be Luke and the book of Acts. So Luke, and originally they were one scroll. They were one continuous two-volume work. Um, Luke being the story of Jesus and then Acts being the story of the church once Jesus had ascended to heaven. But they make up about 28% of the New Testament, about one-fourth, a little over one-fourth of the New Testament. Now Luke is not mentioned by name in either. And that is an, an interesting thing. What we find in biblical studies is that most of the authors of the Bible are unnamed. Occasionally, the author is named. Most of the titles are attributed to the books by other people because they are a main character in the book. But the thing is, a man called by God, inspired by God, unless there is some reason for him to mention his name. Of course, Paul... Paul had a personal relationship with the churches that he was writing, so he said, this is me, Paul, writing this. But in general, the authors are there to tell the word of God, not talk about themselves. And I find that to be very appropriate, and, and I think Luke was a humble, educated man, um, and he was not talking about Luke here. He wanted to talk about Jesus and his work. Uh, Paul referred to Luke as a physician in, in Colossians 4:14, 4, and that that is commonly the tradition about his profession. Um, also, tradition tells us that he was from Antioch when Paul and Barnabas were. Antioch is in what's modern-day Turkey. Uh, it was one of the biggest early churches, and they they it is there that they begin to send out missionaries uh, in um, Acts 13. Uh, the church at Antioch prays for Paul and Barnabas and lays hands on them and commissions them to go and tell the word about Jesus to the whole world. And so as we, sell, as we uh, note our Lottie Moon, that mission work that we are contributing to in our Lottie Moon was begun in Antioch. And, and that most likely is the church that Luke was from. That is what tradition tells us. It's silent on that. So Luke was a historian, and if, if you want to know a lot about historians and what they do, talk to Todd after the service. That's his area of expertise is history and historians. Um, but Luke was a historian, and he began his book in the introduction. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. Most likely the book of Mark and the book of Matthew were in existence when Luke wrote his book because there's a lot of stuff. Most likely he, the, the scrolls were open as he was uh, generating his new text. Uh, if, not, if not that, a lot of scholars think that there was a precursor that both Matthew and Mark and Luke may have gotten their, some of their information, firsthand accounts from, but we don't really know. Uh, it, it's not that important, but he's, he's wanting to uh, write an account, write a history for us. And so these histories were not made up. These were not people in a room, in a trance, generating Bible. Uh, these were eyewitness accounts 
they used eyewitness reports circulating among us from the disciples and that from the disciples of Jesus is very important for scripture in the New Testament in order to be part of the canon uh, you have to be able to relate a text strongly back to someone who heard, was a disciple an apostle that heard Jesus teaching these are first-hand accounts and that's not to be underestimated um, if you need some evidence and proof of the Bible um, the claims made and there's a lot of supernatural claims made in the New Testament we know that Jesus was dead completely dead and that he rose that's a supernatural claim that doesn't happen uh, otherwise well all these accounts were given while people were still alive at the time who, to corroborate or refute. So when they say eyewitness account, that is strong evidence. That we are an evidence-based culture. We're a scientific-based culture, which is based on evidence. Uh, and the evidence leans heavily towards the truth of the gospel. And don't let people in this modern age of science put you on your heels. Um, Ultimately, science cannot prove God exists and that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Science can't do it. It's blind to that. And science cannot disprove that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of mankind. And so we're kind of at loggerheads. It seems that God left us with a system that you have to have faith in order to receive the blessing of salvation. You have to make a leap from what you can prove and what you can know to get to God. And I think that's the way he did uh, Luke may have gathered a lot of details, such as facts about when Jesus was young, from Mary herself. A lot of scholars believe that he interviewed maybe new, new uh, Mary. Most likely, going into tradition a lot, but, but John had uh, kind of adopted Mary and took care of her after Jesus ascended. Uh, and we know that John gravitated to the coast of uh, uh, Turkey near Antioch where he had his church. And so it's very possible that Luke traveled and spoke with Mary herself. Um, Luke also seemed to have a lot of contacts inside the court of Herod uh, when he gave, he gave details that would not be you know, widely circulated in public. Um, so he was a well-connected person. He was a first-hand or near second-hand observer of the things that he writes about. Luke had two purposes, uh, two basic purposes in writing this book. The first one he tells us in the first, uh, second, third, third, third and fourth verse, uh, and that was to confirm the, the faith of Theophilus, who he addresses, that his faith rested on firm historical facts. Um, and, and it's kind of what we're receiving. Luke is making a case for each of us that this wasn't just a myth that was made up 2,000 years ago, that this, this really happened, these events that we stake our faith on really happened. In verse 3 and 4, having carefully investigated all the things from the beginning, I have decided to write an accurate account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught, so that you can be confident in the beliefs that you base your eternal life on. That's an important thing, isn't it? That's a, that's a noble work. And so I hope that as we go through this, you can be more certain at the end of our study of Luke uh, of the things that you have been taught about Christ and salvation. And the so the other purpose was to present Jesus as the son of man who had been rejected by Israel. And that's a key thing. You know, Matthew was focused towards presenting the Messiah to the Jewish people. Uh, they were... And they did not like that. They did not want Jesus to be the disciple. And Luke is a different angle. Very important for us uh, who have not grown up in, in Jewish heritage. Uh, but he was 
rejected by Israel. And because of the rejection, Jesus was also preached to the Gentiles so that they could know the kingdom of God and be saved. Um, Luke, as, as much as any of the Gospels, uh, Christ opens his arms to everyone. Everyone is part of the deal. And so really probably Luke is much, I don't want to, I, I'm not equipped to make that statement. What I wanted to try to say was that Luke might be more important to us non-Jews than the other Gospels, but they're all important, so I, I won't step out on that limb, but it's a very important. So it, it does have a Gentile character. That Gentile just means non-Jew, non-Israelite uh, flavor. Luke must have been a Gentile, for Paul differentiates him from Jew, Jews and Colossians that are helping, helping Paul. Paul wrote of his fellow workers, Aristarchus, Mark, and John were the only ones who were Jews. And that left Epaphras, Luke, and Demas probably as Gentiles. Uh, seems fairly clear. Um, and, and so there's several evidences. Look, as you look at this book, and we, you know, we'll, we'll point these things out as we go through, but just in, to give you a list of the evidences of the Gentile character, that it was primarily focused towards Gentiles. Luke frequently explained Jewish locations in the book. You see the, the places there um, in Luke. This would be unnecessary if he was writing to Jews. My, Matthew did not take the time to explain these things to his readers because he assumed that they're targeting Jews. Matthew assumed they would know where all these places were. Uh, Luke traced the Je Jesus' genealogy there in chapter 3 all the way back to Adam. In Matthew, the genealogy goes back to Abraham, uh, implying that Jesus rep represented all mankind rather than just the Jewish nation. Um, uh, a subtle point, but a very important one. And of course, if you go back and look at the calling of Abraham, it's very clear that God intended all nations to be blessed through Abraham. Uh, and I think Luke was right in line with the original calling of Abraham. Luke referred to the Roman emperors in designating the dates of Jesus' birth. We know this uh, from, from Luke chapter 2. Uh, he, uh, he also, in chapter 3, dated John the Baptist preaching to the emperor. Now, that is for Gentiles. The Roman calendar would be used by Gentiles rather than the Jewish calendar, uh, which we see other places reference. Luke, in the words that he uses, used words more familiar to Gentile readers. In Matthew, there would be a lot of Jewish terms, and, it, and there's an example here. Didaskalos is used for teacher rather than rabbi. Uh, didactic teaching um, is where a teacher teaches and students uh, learn from the teacher as opposed to maybe group work or where you know students would go and get information for themselves and then present it to the class. We are, no, we are used to didactic teaching. That's what most of us grew up getting where it is teacher-centered. Teacher is presenting the information to the student. Uh, Luke used throughout, when he quoted the Old Testament, he would use the Greek Old Testament quotations. Of course, Luke wrote in Greek. The New Testament is written in Greek. And so, the gener in general, the, the, Jew uh, the Gentile Christians preferred the Greek Old Testament. And we see that in Luke. I give the quotations there um, that he quoted from the Old Testament. Uh, it seems that there was five times that the Hebrew term was used, and all of, four of those were when Jesus was talking, and it was a direct quotation of what Jesus had said. And so whenever Luke was using the Old Testament, he used the Greek version. Number six, evidence. Little is said about Jesus fulfilling prophecy in, in, the, in the book of Luke. Because that was not nearly as important to Gentiles who had not been raised. To the, to the Jewish believers, 
when they said scriptures, that was talking about the Old Testament. Um, Gentile Christians would not be the same. There's only five direct references to the fulfillment of prophecy. Um, and likewise, most of those were in uh, things that Jesus had said. Direct quotations from Jesus. So now let's change gears just a little bit and look at the general characteristics of the Gospel of Luke. Uh, first, as we've already said, Luke emphasized a universal message of the gospel, and that's a hallelujah. Um, God revealed himself for the Jews. I, I believe the Jews were meant to be missionaries for the world. I think the whole intention, as I step back and speculate on the, on the Bible, I think God meant for the Jews to become a holy people and receive the Messiah, and then present the Messiah to the world was the ideal uh, thing. And of course, they refused to do that. Uh, but Luke won't really emphasize it. He often wrote about sinners and the poor and outcasts from Jewish society, kind of highlighting uh, that God is there to save all people. Samaritans were presented as coming to faith in the Messiah only in Luke. Uh, and Luke frequently wrote about women and children and their faith. And it is funny, you know, for us that have grown up in church, the, the Gospels, it, it was surprising to me as I was reading some of these things because we just kind of, we kind of meld them together, don't we? And we think about what does the Gospel say, and we don't really think, and I know any time that I will quote from Luke, I will look at a cross-reference in Matthew and Mark, and stuff, and, and we tend to kind of meld them together, and we don't always see that Luke really had a heart for all people, for the faith of all people, um, and and for the least of these uh, to come to faith in God. And I I truly believe that 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 is the model for us all. We should care about all people and about all salvations. Luke's gospel gives readers a more comprehensive grasp of history. As we said, he was a historian of the period than the other gospels. He presented more facts about the earthly life of Jesus than, in, than Matthew, Mark, or John did. He was a historian, and he paints a big picture, and he gives us background information. Luke emphasized forgiveness. That was a big theme throughout the book of Luke. He also emphasized prayer. Um, at many points, Jesus prayed in his ministry, and we can, and, and it's very comforting, isn't it, to watch Jesus pray? It, it gives me confidence when I watch how Jesus prayed to pray the same way. You know, prayer's hard. Do we know this? Do we agree? It's hard to know what to pray. And I like to watch Jesus pray. <laughs> And then pray like him. And so I appreciate Luke uh, for that, for his prayer. Luke noted the individual's place in coming to repentance, much more so than the other ones, which was much more the general idea of people coming to repentance. Luke focuses on the specific people. He stressed the action which must come from each individual who followed Jesus. And examples of that were um, Zechariah and Elizabeth early on, Mary, Simeon and Anna when Jesus was a baby, uh, Martha and Mary, Simon, Levi, the centurion, and the widow of Nan. A very intimate look at their process of coming to faith in Jesus. Luke also talked a lot about material things than the other authors. Um, he didn't always, he did not glorify the poor. He didn't necessarily point them out as righteous, but he was very cautious uh, when talking about people who valued money more than they did Jesus. Uh, and so those, those scriptures that, like the rich young ruler, um, would be found in Luke, um, that in order to enter into salvation, Jesus has to be first uh, on our priority list.
And then finally, uh, Luke often spoke about the joy that accompanies faith and salvation. Um, and this is a challenge. We, it, it's going to be good to see what Luke says about joy. Joy is an elusive thing for us, e even for believers. Uh, and so hopefully Luke can teach us um, more about finding that joy uh, on a daily basis. As, as we get near the end here, I want to look one more time at verse 24. The purpose of a Luke study. He said, having carefully invest, investigated all the things that have happened with Jesus and his disciples from the beginning, I also have decided to write an accurate account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so that you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught, everything you believe, every the information that you used to decide to accept Jesus. Think back on your life. Think back to who first taught you the plan of salvation. I, I can't even begin to imagine thinking back like that. This, this name Theophilus, uh, means literally lover of God. And so there are many people that think there was no person Theophilus, but that it was a general title to the readers who had come to faith, to Christian readers who loved God. It was a very common name in the first century, so it is possible that he was talking to a specific person. But there's no other record of Theophilus specifically. And so I ask you this morning as we get ready to close, if you met a stranger today and they wanted to know five things about you, how high would lover of God be on your list? This is just a question, an internal question. As you begin to tell identities about yourself, who, who you are. And whatever you answer on that, I think that Luke has something for you we get ready to, to dig into it. And so I ask you, I'll leave you with this question as we close. This morning, are you certain of the truth of everything that you've taught? Or is there more work to be done on that? And I think the, the truth is, if you're too certain, you probably got way more to learn than the person beside you that's not as certain. Um, I, I learn every day. It's one of the reasons that I love uh, being a pastor as I dig into things to try to teach. I'm content, continually learning new things. And so are you certain of the truth of everything you've been taught? As we pray, I want you to set a goal for what you want to get out of the book of Luke. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this work, this book. Lord, we thank you for the revelation of who you are and your plan. Lord, we thank you for coming down. We thank you for opening your arms to all people in the world. Lord, I know that we have a responsibility. All the world has a responsibility to you. And I pray that somehow through the study of this book, we each can become more aware of our own responsibility. And Lord, I pray that we can shine that light to others and that you will draw people through our lives uh, to your eternity, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.